Hi everyone, it's Julie from Artfully You. Welcome to stage two of our Singing in the Rain video. I hope you enjoy it. Please put any comments in the comment section on YouTube. I'd love to have your feedback. Uh, this painting is copyright, but please do feel free to share it on your social media. All I ask is you tag me, hashtag julie.artfullyyou on Instagram and Artfully You on Facebook. I hope you enjoy this video and I look forward to your feedback. If you like this video, please press the subscribe button and the like button and don't forget to click the bell for notifications for future videos. Thank you. So, welcome everybody to stage two of our Singing in the Rain painting. So last week, just to recap, we did our background scenery, our little background country lane stroke forest. All we need to do is add some leaves on the trees and then we can start drawing our person. So we are going to do a little bit of embellishment to the background before we start our person oh. and our umbrella. So have a think about what you want going on in the background. Awesome. Um, I mean, you could have bare trees. It could be the end of fall and everything's gone, but in which case there would be things on the ground. So I think I'm going to put, um, I want to put some nice autumnal colors in mine. Um, and then what I'm going to do is because I want to use some like oranges and reds and yellows, I'm going to make my umbrella complementary. So my umbrella, I'm going to do lots of blues to be the opposite of all my reds and oranges. So, um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So to start with, um, using the blue. So sorry. I'm not going to do that. What's I want that? these colors. Me too. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to mute Kathy and Franca for a minute. <laughs> So I want you to decide uh, what colors. I heard you. You can't get away. <laughs> I think we've got troublemakers in the gray. <laughs> I'm just joking. So I'm going to get out some um, reds and yellows and oranges and just put a little bit on the trees. Um, and then, but don't forget a lot of this is going to get covered by the umbrella. So let's not bother with the area that the umbrella is going to go anyway. I am going to switch cameras in a minute. Um, so, and you know, and put something on the ground. So whatever you're doing in the trees, if it's awesome colors, let's reflect that with a, a few um, bits of color on the ground. Uh, because I'm going to be doing a, a little bit of detail, I am going to be using a smaller brush. So I am going to be using a round. So this is actually masterstroke size 10 round, but in the winds and Newton range, this is more like a six. So every brush company seems to label their brushes differently, but this is um, a number 10 in this masterstroke brand. Um, so just something fairly small, just to give you an indication of the comparison to my pinky finger, if that helps at all. Um, so, uh, so the colors I'm going to be getting out are yellow and red, so I can do lots of kind of oranges and things. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on this, so um, let's have a hair dry handy. Kathy, hi. Karen. Karen, Karen. oh my God, sorry. Where's my break? It's okay. Today? So I ended up with the original. See, I went back to this. Right. So I'm not going to be doing trees, but I'll be doing some sort of flowers or something. So I was going back to your uh -huh. original. I'll have to figure that one out. I love. The I might just put flowers. leaves on the ground. I haven't decided yet. I love the idea of flowers. That's a great idea. So okay. do whatever speaks to you. But let's say this is just a background. So we're not going to spend too long on this. Okay. So I'm going to switch cameras. Um, I'm going to move everybody over to my big screen so that I can see you all clearly. Um, but what I am going to do is make sure I keep my, um, my window open for participants in case we get any late comments. So is that in focus? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And you can see 
both um, the original and the demo picture. Okay. So, and I'm not going to have room, I don't think, unless I shove everything. Can you kind of see my palette as well? It'd be great if you could see everything. Can you see my palette as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm going to get out red and yellow. So I'm going to do cadmium red and just uh, cadmium yellow. So there's my, my yellow. I'm going to take the exposure down a little bit. Okay. Where's my nutcrackers? <laughs> I have a lot of trouble with these lids. Uh, this is a very good gadget. If ever you see one of these in the supermarket, it's very good for getting lids off. It's supposed to be for getting kind of jar lids off, but I find it really useful addition. Okay. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit of white out too. I have orange in a tube. Can I use that? Absolutely. Okie doke. Thanks. Absolutely. Oh, you know what? Forgot to put my apron on and just got white paint on my t-shirt. Oh! <laughs> no, me really good at remembering my apron. Okay. So I'm going to start um, background to foreground. So my background is always going to be a little bit more muted and, and faded. So I'm going to get some red and some yellow, make an orange. So obviously, if you already have an orange in a tube, go ahead and use that. Um, all about making life easy for ourselves today. Okay. Now, because this is fully saturated and I want everything going back to look a little bit further away. Um, I am going to slightly dull this. So the opposite to orange on the color wheel is blue. Um, so I may just add a very small amount of blue, very tiny amount just to dull down my orange. Like hardly anything. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to this as well, just to lighten it. So dull it and lighten it. I'm going to try a little bit of green here. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to put some kind of, see how I'm just doing some little dots? And I will add some more colors, but I'm just going to start by, so I am li literally dabbing and dotting. Just to create the illusion of, you know, when um, trees have lost a fair amount of their leaves. So, so I'm not trying to cover the branches in little circles, which I used to do when I was first learning trees. We're doing clusters. So I would say do odd shape clusters at a time. So I'm starting with my orange, which has a bit of white in it. So it'd be like a peachy color. So I'm literally just creating some little dabbed clusters that go in front of some of my branches. And I'm kind of going side to side. What I'm also going to do is create a little tree line in the distance or maybe this is shrubbery or however you want to interpret it just right on my horizon so at the moment I'm using just one color this kind of peachy color so let's not worry too much about this area because this area is going to have the umbrella on it. So I'm really not going to worry 
too much about this top corner. I'm just going to do a little bit of dabbing. I can always fill that in later. I like that contrast of the green and orange. I do like to reflect what's going on in the background a little bit in the foreground. So I'm just going to put a little flash of color here, the same one. Just a little bit in this foreground tree to kind of connect it. And just a little flash there. So use whatever colors speak autumn to you. So I'm going to put a few yellows in here too. I'm concentrating my yellows on the right side because this is where my light source is. I'm not really going to worry too much about where my umbrella is going to go because it's going to cover it anyway. So all of this is going to be covered by umbrella. And lastly, I'm putting in just a few reds here and there. Okay, so I'm going to put a few little clusters here on the ground again. Most of it's going to be covered by the umbrella. Uh, 
How's everybody doing? Very quiet today. <laughs> Karen, you doing okay? Well, I've gone totally different. Oh, I like I've it. I've gone very abstract. Yeah. And muted on my color. Did you see my background? Let's see. Muted and oh. abstract. And then I'm going to go very realistic and bright with my with my umbrella as a contrast. Oh, I like it. It's a little, I don't know. I'm enjoying your creative process. Well, I'm having fun. <laughs> oh, that's the main thing. Chris, how are you getting on? Yeah, I'm good. Good. I think if I redid, um, I did another background because I like the, remember we talked about keeping the other one as a painting as it was. Yeah. So I redid this background. Right. And that's where I am right now. Oh, that looks great. Thanks. Yeah, I like that. So for homework, was it this class we were supposed to do a thumbnail sketch or was it for the Wednesday class? The Wednesday class. Okay, well, I did one for this one. <laughs> oh, I'm really pleased. That's great. I did. I'm trying to find out where it is. It was there a minute ago. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. spotlight you. Hold on. Um, Karen, did you do your thumbnail sketch? Yep. I made it to proportion. All oh, right, great. So that's in proportion to your canvas? Yes. Which took me a while to do. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm hoping because you've practiced it, you'll feel more confident with applying it to your painting. Well, I did cheat a little. That's okay. How did you cheat? I did put a little bit of pencil on to give me an idea of where I'm supposed to go. That's a good idea. Sorry. <laughs> no. I'm glad you did that. Because there's a couple of ways we can do it. We, you can sketch it on with pencil or you can sketch it on with watered down paint. So whichever makes it easier for you. Okay, great. Yeah, Monday morning, sorry, my brain was not joining the dots for a second there. I don't know, I've gone very abstract here. Oh, I like it. <clears throat> okay, let's clean this up. I'm just gonna turn me on mute. So I want you to feel that when we are ready to do the umbrella, whichever makes it easier for you, I am just gonna explain how I'm gonna do it. Um, so I use fingers to help me space things out. So each, because I'm on an eight by 10 canvas for mine, each segment of the umbrella, especially my center segment is three fingers apart. And the width of it is four fingers down, which is about a third of the way down my canvas. So if I was to separate my canvas into three, one, two, three, my umbrella comes about a third of the way down. With regards to how far across it goes, 
it's roughly about two thirds of the way across one third is left open so about one third down two thirds across um when we go to draw the legs the way i did it was i did it the width of my finger for the leg so i did it one third from the bottom and the the width the length of my finger sorry the length i meant to say length the length of my finger okay um, but we're going to start with the umbrella and do the legs later, but I just kind of wanted to explain the proportions. So one third of the way down, two thirds of the way across, and my segments are three fingers wide. So if you're on a bigger canvas, then, you know, you can increase the, the proportion to four fingers. And then the, the two either side are two fingers wide. So the center one's the largest and then two fingers wide. So that's kind of how I did it. So I'm going to just dry this for a minute and then I'm going to apply my sketch onto my canvas. Um, but one thing you can do if you want is use um, a little bit of thin down white paint to sketch out your design or you can do um, what Karen did and use a little pencil. So I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm just going to quickly mute myself and hair dry my canvas. Okay, are we ready to try this? <laughs> oh, um, by the way, did um, did anybody have a chance to check out the recordings from last week? I'd appreciate your feedback. On YouTube, did anybody check it out? No, Karen, anybody? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I have recorded the lessons for you. So um, let me know what you think if you get a minute to check them out on YouTube. I tried to make them with, I kind of cut out the waffle and put some music on and stuff. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sketch out this umbrella with a little bit of white paint. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white paint on the tip of my brush, just a tiny bit. And remember, it's a third of the way down, two thirds of the way across. 
So a third of the way down, two thirds of the way across. So I'm going to start about here, three fingers wide, a third of the way down. And I'm going to do a curved line. It's easy if you just kind of curve around your fingers. The first one's the hardest once you've done the first one. So I'm sketching this out with a little bit of white paint. So there's my first one. Curved line, three fingers wide. And when I've done that, I'm gonna, again, with a little sketch, it's gonna end up one finger wide at the top. So I'm gonna take a slightly curved line. So imagine one finger wide, so to about there. Slightly curved line. There, slightly curved line. Just one finger wide. There. So I'm actually doing it with white paint because I can, if I, if I get it wrong, I can erase it. I can just get a little damp cloth and, and wipe it out. everybody done that? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. The second one, either side or two fingers wide, and I'm going to change the angle. So the angle is about one finger above. So I'm going to do like two fingers wide this time. Slightly straighter line. One. Two, two fingers wide. So again, slightly straighter line. I'm going to imagine my vanishing point is about here. Okay, so I'm going to take it. So this side, I'm going to do a slightly do a curve. My hand wobbly today. There we go. My last one. Actually, I think I'm going to fit another one on there. It's going to be one finger wide. Again, tracing up to my vanishing point, which is about here. Imagine it's there on my palette. <laughs> okay. You know, and the nice thing about sketching out with white is if we need to make any adjustments. So I might think, I think this one's a bit too, I think this one needs to be a little bit wider. We can make adjustments before we commit to anything. So I might make that a little bit wider. So keep playing with it. And when you're happy with it, think about your color scheme.
you know do you want it to be bright red do you want it to be bright green like do you want it to be rainbow like think about your color scheme has anybody got a color scheme that they'd really like to try that they want to share karen you're muted <laughs> I'm just following yours. I've already got it all lined up, so Perfect. I'll be here. Okay, so let's take a vote. Who, put your hand up if you want rainbow. Okay, and put your hand up if you want more blues or one color, analogous colors. Okay, so go with whatever color scheme speaks to you. Um, I, anything goes really. I might do rainbow. I feel like I'm in a rainbow mood. I was going to do blues, but I think I'm going to do rainbow. I mean, I have seen people do patterned umbrellas with flowers or polka dots or, you know, it doesn't have to be plain. Oh dear. Depends what, what mood you're in. <laughs> I'd be really impressed if uh, anybody wants to do something a little bit different and unusual. So we may need a couple of coats of color to get rid of the, the background. So I would say paint all your colors first and then we'll do another coat later and don't worry about shading just yet. I have to say there's some lovely spots at the moment for hiking that has these amazing colors. So I've just mixed a little bit of blue and red together to make my purple. Thank you. 
Oh dear. Having some problems? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Oh, nearly rinsed my brush and my coffee there. <laughs> Won't be the first time that's happened. I wanted to share with you my little dollar store purchase. Julie? Three dollars this was. Oh. And it came with the palette too. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> hi, hi, is it Kathy? Uh, uh, no, it's Franca. Oh, hi, Franca. Hi, I just want to ask you, when we mix the colors with the brush, I always end up a big blob of color on my brush. Yeah, what good that's way what the, so that's what the paper towel's for. You want to just wipe it off on the paper towel, clean your brush, yeah, and then pick up a little tiny bit. So whenever I mix, I wipe, rinse, wipe, and then pick up the color that I need. So I don't end up with too much. Oh, I always, always say wipe, rinse, wipe. Just say it as like a little mantra. Okay, thank you. I, I do the same thing. And, um, you know, and when you've mixed the color you want, you, you get excited and you want to apply it straight away. But if there's too much on your brush, you're not going to get precision. It's a really good question. Because I'm not as accurate as you yet, Julie, can I put the white in afterwards? I've kind of lost my white. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to touch up my white later as well.
So I'm just putting a few highlights. So I've just added a tiny bit of white to my purple to add a few highlights. It's, the lights come in this way, so it's mainly on this side. So just added a tiny bit of white here. Um, tiny bit of the purple I put on the side of my red here. I'm going to make this orange quite light because this is on the side reflecting the most light. So I might add a little bit of white into my orange. Got that singing in the rain song stuck in my head. <laughs> what happens if you still have a lot of blue showing through? Um, uh, for the trees or from the sky? From the sky. Um, you can use white as an undercoat if it's really bad, or you can just add another layer once it's dry. I had to undercoat the yellow because it was just green. Yeah. I'm going to give everybody lots of time to do their umbrella. Just give me a shout when you're ready. We have lots of time.
How's everybody doing? Okay, so I'm going to make a suggestion with this picture because of where we put because of where we put the um, the road. And I know you've done your thumbnail sketch already, but I just want to show you. I'm going to screen share for a minute where I think the leg should be positioned if you have done a road like mine. So give me a second. The, the legs? Am I screen sharing? Yeah. Can, okay. Can you see what happens when I flip the image? Um, maybe if you can unmute yourself just because I don't. Yeah, that's don't, great. Yeah. So look, you see how I think it needs to be that way, heading towards where I put my road rather than the original which is that way do you agree yes because mm -hmm. the, the original is pointing to the top it looks like they're walking towards the top left hand corner but if i flip it they're walking towards the top right hand corner do, do you think that's a good idea yes yeah okay so i think that's what i'm gonna do so um so let's paint it that way and then it's walking towards this focal point and i'm sorry because i know you've done your thumbnail sketches the other way around but i've only just thought of this <laughs> so i will leave can you still if i leave this up can you still see what i'm painting or is it best if i just take if i stop screen sharing what do you think Anybody? <laughs> I think you need to stop screen sharing. Okay, yeah, no problem. I'll stop sharing. But I'm going to keep that in front for me. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to work a lot better to do it that way. Um, and it's just slightly adjusting things. So I'm going to show you how I did this. So um, I'm actually going to start with a paler blue, so white with, is everybody ready to have a go at this? Yeah, okay, so I'm going to start with pale blue, so I'm using cobalt blue and white, or whatever blue you have and white. So a light bright blue. Okay, well, imagine all my fingers are the two legs for now. Okay, so my index finger, it's going to be that length and that that wide. Okay, so from because I'm on an eight by ten canvas. 
I'm going to take it down to there, but the um, <coughs> the Wellington is going to stop there. Okay, so this is this is where I'm going to end off. So I'm making a mental note, and it's going to be as wide as my finger. <coughs> So at the moment, I'm not going to worry about shape. I'm just going to draw a stick. <laughs> and I'm just going to check. It's about the length of my finger. So your umbrella is the top third. The lag is the middle third. And then we have space underneath. So a third, a third, a third. It's best to do it too thin to start with. And then we can thicken it off later. I'm going to very gently make this slightly wider now at the top. And I'm going to keep the width at the bottom. So I don't want it too wide, still only as wide as my finger. It's best to make it skinnier than you think because you can always make it wider, but it's harder to make it narrower. Now, right now we're doing the whole leg and we're going to have a boot on it. So we're allowing to have the boot painted over the top of this. That's why I started with a lighter color. Are we okay? So next to this, I'm going to do a slightly darker blue. So I'm just adding a tiny bit more blue into my blue and white mixture. Same width, but it's going to overlap by a third. So I'm going to paint over it for now because I don't really mind. But eventually this is going to be behind. Okay, this is literally only going to be about a finger and a half wide. So about to there. Sorry, long, didn't mean wide. So it's only going to be short. I'm going to paint basically a rectangle. Oh dear. So looking at the length of the leg, this rectangle is about a quarter of the length of the leg. Have we done that or you want me to wait a little bit? Chris, how are we doing? Yeah, good. Excellent. Kathy and Franca? Yeah. Karen? Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. So the next part is 
is basically a square going in the opposite direction. I'm going to do this dark blue so you can just so it shows up. So I'm going in the opposite direction, half of approximately half of the size of what I've just done. So just a little square. So don't worry about what's going to go in between. We're just doing shapes right now. So rectangle square and the square is roughly half the size of the rectangle. Okay, we want to make this leg look like it's in front of this leg. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to get our lighter color again and we're going to put this leg in over this one. So we're just going to smudge this line to send it backwards. We're literally just going to run our paintbrush down the middle to smudge that line. Then we're going to dry it and we're going to put the boots on. Then we're going to do all the hi highlights and shadows. So we're just going to quickly dry it. Okay. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> okay. Next stage. So what we're going to do next is start sketching out where the boots are going to go. So you might want a small brush for this. I'm certainly going to use a smaller brush. So I'm going to go back to my round again. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more red. Cadmium red. So I'm going to use pure red. For the first boost. Okay. So the heel of what's going to be my left boot is going to line up with the top 
of my right boot. And the right boot is two fingers or roughly one third of the length of my leg. So I'm gonna put two fingers here and I'm just gonna do the top of my boot and I'm gonna go slightly over the edge of my jeans. I'm gonna put a line there. And for now, I'm just gonna go down to the length of where the ankle is of my pants. And go slightly out on the right hand side. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay, now the angle of the foot is a lot more slight than you think it is. So it's a very slight angle. So I'm gonna take this curved line of the heel and only about the same again, and we're gonna take it out at a bit of an angle. So I'll, I'll zoom in on this. Okay. So a slight angle very tiny kind of where the toe is going to be and it's a very slight curve i just realized you're doing it the opposite of what i was doing okay let me go yeah. back here. shoot 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 because we flipped it yeah i didn't though now it's going to look strange until we put the highlights on If you didn't flip it, you could. We can either work with it, oh, dear. or we can just paint over it. I am recording this. And once we put the other boot in, if you feel like you want them to be higher, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to get some black next. A little bit of black. So I'm just going to zoom this out so this doesn't fall over. I'm just going to get a tiny bit of black. Okay, so tiny bit of black. I'm gonna establish the shape of the foot. 
So I'm going to put in the sole. It's going to go a little bit thinner as it gets towards the end. And then I'm going to put in the, the heel. Okay, and then I'm going to mix black and red together to make a very dark red. And I'm going to put in shadow. I might need to dry this. I'll see how. Yeah, I think I need to dry it. Won't be a second. Okay, so as soon as I put this shadow in, it should start looking like a boot. So I'm putting the shadow in, which is my black and red together. So I'm doing it either side of the boot. And this gives it shape. A little tag there. You know, they have those like hunter boots with a little bit of white. <laughs> Look at that part, and then just this part would reflect a little bit of light on this side.
Can we have a go at the other one? Okay, the other one. Let's put a finger space between the two legs. Okay, we put a thing that's finger space between the two legs. And it is actually a finger space that we're gonna we're gonna try and leave. So that's kind of the angle that we need to, to bring the other heel out to. So roughly in line with this line, we're gonna go across by a finger space. Okay, it's gonna come out fair ways. We're gonna do a curved line. Okay, gonna go in a little bit. We're gonna go up over that square that we painted. And cross. So we're making kind of, I um, can't remember what the name of, is it trapezium? No, is that the right word? Who's, who's mathematical ones here? <laughs> one side's gonna be dark red, one side's gonna be light red. What is this shape? Is that a trapezium? I can't remember. So one side is light red, one side is dark red. So almost a rectangle, just a little bit wider at the top. And then we're gonna see the whole sole of the shoe. So the sole of the shoe is going to go slightly higher than the bottom of the other shoe. And it's like a little figure of eight. So I'm doing this with black. We'll get this to shape, just the angles and the shapes in first. Oops.
I know this side a little bit too thick. Sorry, guys. So good thing about paper towel. Okay. How's everybody doing? It's hard reversing it when I've painted it this way so many times. <laughs>
Okay. If you're still working on the boot, take a little break from the boot. Let's work on the shadows of our jeans and we'll come back to it. So we're going to mix a blue with a tiny bit of black. So blue and a little bit of black. I'm just going to zoom out a tiny bit. So blue with a little bit of black. So not too much black, just to make kind of a navy blue. Okay, and we're going to establish um, this leg. So what we're going to do is draw on the other leg to establish the shadows of the leg that's in front. So I'm going to put the back leg maybe mainly in shadow. To bring this front leg forward. So that's with my black and my blue to make navy blue. So I'm putting quite defined lines into with the brush strokes to show the crease of the jeans. I feel like this angle is a little bit too steep, so I'm going to just soften this angle a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of navy blue on the other leg at the top. And I'm going to establish some lines of where I want the creases of the jeans to go. I think I'll put one line here. There's a line here. Make this one a bit steeper. So that's with my navy blue, and then I'm going to take pure blue, so pure cadmium blue. I'm going to put it on the inside of the leg.
I'm going back over with light blue. I'm just making sure my creases are exactly where I want them. Are you still with me? Karen, Jane, Franca, Kathy, are you all still with me? <laughs>
I feel like I need to extend my path a little bit. I feel like my person's kind of falling off the path. Sometimes it, once you put the figures on, it doesn't read quite right. I think I need to make my path a bit wider up here. You see that? <laughs> That's better. Now they're more on the path than hovering over the path. So it's okay to make adjustments. Yeah, that's better. Now they're on the path. Does anybody need any help? Everybody's so quiet today. Somebody please speak to me, please. <laughs> I need to hear a human voice or I know you're still there. <laughs> We're just concentrating, Julie. Oh my God. I was like, is everybody okay? I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> it worries me when I can't hear a thing. <laughs> Everybody's just concentrating, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna make a little bit of a shadow.
This has been very intense today, Julie. Oh, very intense, I know. It's been intense for me because I've had to reverse the image. Well, and I had to reverse it back from what you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> not sure I did it, but I tried. Hey, we have to challenge ourselves. It's the only way we learn, right? I think I'm going to leave it before I put too much do on it. And you know, it's sometimes better when you look at it again in the morning and you're like, oh, right, that's what I need to do differently. Yeah. I'm still not completely happy with my boots, but I'm gonna fiddle with it. <laughs>